This is your Adventist News, a service of the South Bahamas Conference of Seven Adventists. I'm Stanley Fillard. Coming up in this week's broadcast, ACU holds first retreat for PKs and youth hosts Megafest. These stories and more on this week's Adventist News. On July 16th and 17th, the Atlantic Caribbean Union held for the first time a retreat for the pastor's children within this territory. The assembly of PKs, preachers or pastor's kids as they are referred to, included the children and some of the now adult offspring of clergymen from throughout the Turks and Caicos and Cayman Islands, as well as the North and South Bahamas conferences. The two-day virtual retreat displayed an assortment of talents, provided rap sessions, testimonials, interactive activities, and presentations relating to the life of the PK. The session spoke to the challenges of growing up as a pastor's child and the stigma attached. However, they were encouraged through testimonies of how God can sustain them and lead them into meaningful relationships with Him. Several of the PKs shared about their own ministries and how they too are leading persons to Christ. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, all that is in me, bless your name. Forget not your power at all, not your glory or your fame. For you came to heal the broken, to redeem and make me whole. Bless the Among the speakers were Duran Clark, son of Pastor Danny Clark, president of the North Bahamas Conference, and Pastor Carlin Nayak, whose father also pastors in the Cayman Islands Conference. As a PK, you have to decide that for yourself. We just talked about that in our breakout session, and it was like, hey, yeah, up to age five, you you kind of you kind of uh, brought along with your parents, but after that, you have to start finding uh, Jesus for yourself. You have to start accepting Jesus for yourself. You have to know who Jesus is for yourself. The decision is yours, and you have to say, hey. I'm going to accept this, and this is who I am, and I'm going to be a minister for Christ. I'm going to accept who God placed uh, me here to be. Jesus knew the will of his Father. He knew and understood his assignment. He was aware of the importance of his position as the Son of God. And as many of you uh, know, uh, we have to be bothered about it too. For Jesus and for God, who is our Father, which art in heaven. You know, there are many of us that no matter how old or how young we are, we have to be bowed about it. You know, we have to know that God has called us. He has chosen us and he is ready to use us in a mighty way. Who are you? Are we really just in the shadow of our parents? Are we just uh, pastors, children? Or who are we? 
Sometimes as pastors kids, we struggle with our identity as was mentioned, but I am here to just remind us that we are all special. We are all created unique. We all have our own individual identities and God has a special plan and purpose for each and every one of you. It was mentioned, I, I think by sister Angelica, uh, the favorite text of hers, uh, Jeremiah chapter 29, 11. I know the plans I have for you plans of good and not of evil, plans to give you hope and a future. God has a special plan, a special, special purpose for each and every one of you. Last week, the Youth Department of the South Bahamas Conference held a mega fest, which highlighted a variety of young speakers who told their peers and adults alike of how God had changed their lives, and they encouraged the audience to consider their own victories. The speakers involved children and youth from churches within the family of islands and New Providence. In her presentation, Charlie Thompson, who was among the speakers from the Grantstown Church in Nassau, spoke about David, who had the courage to face the giant Goliath and was victorious under the strength of the Lord. Today, we also have the victory. We have victory over death and hell because Jesus, our champion, arose with the keys of death and of hell. Death has lost its sting. Because for each child of God, death is swallowed up in victory. So we sleep in Jesus. We also have victory over the tears of a broken heart. Here on planet Earth, we say that tears are our language that God understands. But a better day is coming. Tonya Duran from the South Andrews District gave encouragement and spoke of the one who can help us have victory over our suffering. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a terrorist among us that is more dangerous than Bin Laden ever was. He has held our world under siege for much longer than Bin Laden, and he is such a mastermind that he makes sure God gets blamed for all the atrocities on our planet. Haven't you ever heard people asking, why so much suffering? How can a God of love allow it? God is loving and good to everyone, but there's an enemy in the camp. Another power is bringing disaster, tragedy, and death. God says tonight to us in a clear tone of his word, an enemy has done it. They are acts of the devil. The Satan, the terrorist, the destroyer, God is the restorer. He is coming, you might have life and have it in abundance. All the youth speakers spoke with clarity of a loving, forgiving, and redeeming Savior who is in control of all of our affairs. Thanks to Calvary, Satan is a defeated foe. Christ, by his death, earned the right to destroy all death and evil and suffering. Rest assured, he will. You and I earn the right to overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Revelation 12, verse 11. The issue today is... Who will you believe? Who will you follow? A loving God or a fallen angel? The creator and redeemer, the restorer, or the one who has destroyed everything he has ever touched? The Bible is filled with images of our God triumphant. That's why in Zechariah, he is the Lord of hosts with all of heaven at his disposal. In Acts, he is the savior of the world and he is your savior too. In Galatians, he is your liberty. He sets you free. In Philippians, he is your joy. And in Revelation, he is your soon coming king. Next week, we will have more on the Youth Megafest. We'll be back with the upcoming events in our conference. Welcome back to your Adventist News. Here's what's coming up in the South Bahamas Conference. Notice is hereby given that a special called constituency meeting of the South Bahamas Conference of Seven Adventists will be held on August 15, 2021, beginning at 1 p.m. at the Hillview Seven Adventist Church. The church is located on number 134 Tonique Williams Darling Highway, New Providence, the Bahamas. 
The special constituency meeting is called to vote on one of three proposals in relation to the former Bahamas Academy site. All duly appointed delegates are invited to be present at this constituency meeting. Registration for all delegates will be held on Sunday, August 15, 2021, from 9 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. at the Hillview Seventh-day Adventist Church. July is VBS month for our children and adolescent ministries within our conference. Several of our churches provided this exciting experience for our children, so we will hear more about that next week. The activities for the month of July for the youth continues. The third annual Youth Retreat Congress, Ignite 2021, for senior youth ages 18 through 35 years will be held under the theme, Situationships, the 5S formula. On Friday, July 30th at 8 p.m., the event will be virtual only, and on Sabbath, July 31st, from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m., a hybrid service will be held both online and in person. The youth delegates should already be registered for in-house participation at the New Providence Community Center. Please inquire about these activities with your church youth leader or visit the Facebook page of the Youth Department of the South Bahamas Conference. Sunday, August 1st, 2021 will be the AtFit, the Adventist Track and Field Tournament. Youth are asked to plan for this annual tournament and the Adventist youth leaders and coaches are asked to begin team training. For more upcoming events and information on the events mentioned, please also visit our conference website at southbahamasconference.org where you can view our news update along with other programming from our cable channel ATV658, read the weekly logos and the Adventist page publication from the NASA Guardian. Conflict Resolution A conflict is a serious argument between two individuals. Many persons are not aware of ways to resolve these conflicts. Here are a few ways to get through disagreements. Recognize the other person's concerns. Make sure that the person knows that you fully understand their point of view and you are not ignoring them. Calmly discuss each other's concerns. Shouting and blaming each other only makes things much worse. When seeking to resolve conflicts, always meet in person. A face-to-face -face conversation is a thoughtful way of addressing problems. When communicating electronically, something may be said innocently, but the other person may take it in the wrong way. Pay attention to body language. Oftentimes, we are not conscious of our body movements while conversing with someone else. A person can easily feel disrespected if you give off the wrong type of body language, like crossing arms or not making eye contact. Put yourself in the other person's shoes. When we are saturated with our own beliefs, we fail to realize how the other person may feel. By seeing things from their point of view, we are able to get a better understanding of their feelings. Overall. Ensure that the conflict is completely resolved. Make sure you are satisfied with the outcome of the discussion. Don't let issues linger and don't dwell on things of the past. Let us strive at all times to show respect in dealing with each other, showing persons the considerations that you expect in return. This has been Javon Thomas with your health tip, courtesy of Adventist Television. And remember, God wants us to prosper and be in good health. We go now to our news feature from around the world with the Adventist News Network. Seventh-day Adventist leaders in Cuba have not been able to connect with church members as anti-government protests have escalated across the island nation. The protests, which began on July 11, are a result of power outages, continued lockdowns due to the coronavirus pandemic, and the scarcity of food and medicine. There is currently no internet across the island, and internet is the main form of communication between church leaders and members used for worship, prayer, 
Bible studies and circulation of important information. President of the Adventist Church in Cuba, Aldo Perez, said, this is a situation without presidents here. We need the strength from God for we are living by faith. Mm -hmm. I know that our country is very disturbed amid the challenges the nation is facing, but God continues to strengthen his church during difficult times. The scarcity of food, rising food prices, and the lack of medicine has caused leaders to mobilize members to pray and fast more fervently, especially during the past two weeks. Regardless of the hardships experienced, Perez said that God is working miracles among his people. For the past two Sabbaths, prayer vigils have taken place across Cuba. On Sabbath, July 10, the entire church on the island took part in fasting and prayer, and many from Spain and the United States joined to pray for peace, protection, and increased faith. That brings us to the end of our Adventist news from the South Bahamas Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. Please feel free to share what is happening at your church by sending us your news stories and upcoming events by email to sbcadventistnews at gmail.com. To view a rebroadcast of the Adventist News along with other programming or to keep in touch with what's happening in our conference, you can visit our conference website at southbahamasconference.org. Like, follow, and subscribe to our Facebook and Instagram pages as well as our YouTube channel. And on behalf of the production team of Adventist Television Channel 658, thank you for watching our news broadcast. I'm Stanley Fillord for the SBC Media Network. Have a happy Sabbath.